open the meeting on the May 2nd, uh, 2016 school committee meeting. Welcome everybody. And we will partake in the minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes from April 7th. Uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Patty. Okay, so tonight <clears throat> you have your report for the month of April. And if you go to page four, you can see that right now we have about $167,393.19. Um, but if you go to page five, we've got a $25,000 deficit there. Hold on, I can't even find it. Sorry. Page five. Mm -hmm. Four, we have 167,000. If you go to page five, we have a deficit. Of okay. 25. But, um, uh, and then we have an additional about another $11,000 coming in repairs. Um, before we put the spending freeze in, we had ordered fans to um, fix the exhaust system. Uh, when we went to cancel that order, the pick parts were already in. We would have had to pay for the parts anyways, pay to store them, so we just went ahead and put them in over the vacation as scheduled. Um, and then we have about $8,000 in gas line repair, so about $3,000 for the fans and $8,000 coming for the gas line repair. We also just, um, again, over the vacation noticed we had some more sprinkler leaks in the basement. So we are going ahead, I talked to the town accountant, there's still money in the sprinkler fund, so we will be using those funds to fix the sprinkler leak in the basement. It's because it's of the crappy pipe that they used, the thin pipe at one time? <coughs> it's still so, going. Well, all the, pipe, all the pipe that's original is, is you know, the pipe yeah. that wasn't great to begin with. This right. is a two and a half inch main pipe in the basement, not up in the... Okay. Yeah. So anything that got wet, did anything get wet? No, uh, the leak is minor, yeah. but you know it's a pressurized system, so just need to get it at some point. We gotta get it done. Okay. So I think we'll be okay mm -hmm. because we have um, fifteen thousand dollars worth of savings in teacher salaries on page two, and that was because we had two long-term um, <coughs> leaves of absence uh, that were replaced by lower-paying people. Um, uh, our transportation so far this year has saved us 6640 in fuel adjustment, um, and I believe we have the we ha are done with the heating and the electricity. So with those accounts, we should have enough money to get to the end of the year. Um, there are eight warrants for your signatures. That total forty eight thousand six hundred twenty seven dollars and thirty cents. And I think that's all I'm reporting right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless you have any questions. Can I just add that we, we do have a REAP grant that is limited in terms of how it can be used, but I think it still holds about 17000 bucks here. And uh, that would be a swap kind of a thing. In other words, if there's something we need out of our budget that REAP could potentially cover before the end of the year, that might be a place to turn to. That will save us a little more budget money. You said seventeen. I think it's about 17 okay. plus. So we could take our, our reading teacher. Potentially. Yeah. And I mean, put whatever, some of her wages. <coughs> Who is the reading teacher? Wendy Will. Wendy Will. Yes. Does that carry over to next year if we don't spend it? REAP runs uh, yeah. in a one year cycle through the end of September. Right. So uh, now so. we've been lucky that for 10 or a dozen years we've been getting a REAP grant every year. Mm -hmm. It's a federal grant. Uh -huh. But it's good only through the end of September. If we don't spend it, we use the money. And it's not always guaranteed either. So we should spend it. Yes. Yeah, we should spend it. So I will talk to Brenda uh, tomorrow about moving some payroll. Yeah, that might help us out. Give us and a little then more <coughs> get our school choice in balance. <coughs> and we'll go from there. Any questions for Patty? No. All right, public comment, seeing none. Mr. Lesko, welcome. Thank you. You're here to give us uh, the good news on all, everything that's <laughs> wonderful about the school without problems, right? And here's three handouts um, that he's going to walk you through. 
primarily I would ask to come to, to talk about the gas line and explain to you what happened with that um, on a couple occasions in February on the weekend when people were here in the building they were picking up a smell of gas and then during the week we didn't get it anywhere here in the school in fact we had the gas company here and they didn't get it what it turned out was the kitchen exhaust was being shut off for the weekend and so not as much ventilation was occurring in that end of the building and there were some very small gas leaks in that four inch main that runs the length of the basement. Um, the leaks were small and it didn't present a huge hazard but once the gas company got a look at them and realized um, there were some issues not only with small leaks but assembly of the pipe. That four inch line um, which is a big line. These, I bought this for show and tell. Um, these couplings were on, on the line, and these couplings by code, even at the time the line was installed, um, were not approved. When you buy 10 foot lengths of pipe, these couplings come free. Um, on a gas line, they have to use a malleable coupling. It's, it's a lot thicker. Um, so basically the gas company said, we had to fix the line. In fact, they wanted us to fix it within 10 days. Um, we did some negotiation with them and a minor repair and got them to let it go until the, uh, the break. But once break came, um, if you look at the sketch, the, the gas line runs the whole length of, of what the basement is. The basement starts over here and runs down to the kitchen to where the boilers are and for some reason the gas main comes in at this end of that basement instead of down by the boiler so that four inch line runs well over a hundred feet through the basement and what the contract it was a very labor intensive project they had to do what they had to do was unscrew every every uh, connection in that pipe um, clean the fittings uh, clean the threads on the pipe replace the fittings and put it back together and they put it back together with some unions, so if there's ever any repairs that need to be done, it'll be a little bit easier for them to get done. We did look at the possibility of changing the fact that we had that, the, the meter is here, and the line to the meter is a much smaller diameter line because it's high pressure. We asked the gas company if they could relo relocate the meter to the back of the building. Um, which would have been a good idea for a couple of reasons. Um, it would have saved us a lot of, of, of work re redoing that whole four-inch line, but it also might have made it a little easier at some future date to accommodate an emergency generator. Um, they wanted almost twice as much as we ended up paying for the entire project uh, to relocate the meter, and I'm not quite sure why that was, but uh, it just didn't work out financially. So. If I, there's also a couple of pictures in there just to give you, you know, an, an idea of the, of the size and the length of the line. Um, those guys were here for the better part of three and a half to four days. They had two or three guys here, so just the labor portion of that project was well over $6,000. Well, I'd say the uh, inspectors and the clerk of the works missed the boat on that deal. Mm -hmm. The couplings were the wrong couplings, <coughs> not to mention the pipe, but. Yeah, and the couplings complicated it. I, I, I think we still, pro well, we, we still would have had a repair. We might not have had to redo the whole line. But, you know, there were some real issues with the fact that, you know, not having unions on the pipe and with a, a big size line like that, once they unscrewed and disconnected it, they were worried about the pipe moving. And so it was a big project. Is, is, that, is that an oversized line for what we have? Four it's inches? not because it's low pressure. That's the whole issue. If the, if the meter had been at the other side of the building, the, the line of the meter is probably only one inch, um, one inch pipe size. But you know, once it once it's converted to low pressure, it takes a much bigger diameter pipe to carry it. To carry it. Why would they design it that way, Bob? Pardon me. Why would they design it that the? It's at the I have no idea. It, it it could have been any any number of reasons with site utilities, or 
I don't know why they, why they ended up putting it where they did. It really doesn't make sense because there's nothing in the building that uses gas until you get way to the other end. Right. I wouldn't know anything about that. That's why I say that, you know, you have a gas inspector that came in and approved, approved the system. And, you know, you got yeah. things that weren't even up to code at that time. So, you know, it's a But we are starting to see some things. There was the sprinkler problem in the basement, mm -hmm. the gas line. I know there was a problem with the septic line recently, too. Mm -hmm. Is there a process for <coughs> inspecting things going forward? I mean, it seems like we're always catching these at the end when something's sort of broken or... Well, you know, there may be some small things here or there in the building that may be issues. Um, there's no big glaring things. It's kind Even, of hard to tell when you're going to spray. You know, right, right, right. This job had to be inspected and approved when they were done. That's what I was. That's what I'm right. getting. At. Yeah, the gas company approved this this particular job. Yeah, and they, not 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 when well, they built it 25 yeah. or plus years ago. Yeah. Well, the work that was just done had to be inspected and approved. And I was. did just find out this morning that we have a problem with the septic. Are you up to date on that? Yes, yeah, I've been very involved Okay, so why don't you tell them about um, that, too? Yeah. Ba basically, yeah. we've been getting an alarm on the septic tank. Um, it looks to us like it's just the floats are sticking, but we're going to pump the tank down, which will be a couple of hundred dollars, and we're going to get somebody in there to take a look at it, and it's probably just that the floats are sticking, but it's something that's, you know, it's a real issue um, when, when we start getting a septic uh, alarm. And mm -hmm. we're not able to pump, but those pumps are fairly last new. Time the tank was pumped. The, the, the thing's in pretty good. When, the only reason they're pumping the tank is so they can see. I understand that, but when was the last time the pump? Uh, the tank? Two, years ago. two years ago, and I think that they had us on a two-year cycle yeah. for that anyway. Is that what you? Not your place Yeah. <coughs> so it's due. Well, that's so. reasonable. Right. Yeah, but right. yeah, so we don't have. I agree with you. It's it's the the you know, back to the issue of the, the gas line and the installation problems, it, it really reinforces the fact that on any public construction, um, construction oversight is, is really, really important. We're seeing that more and more. Um, we're going through a very elaborate process now with the Deerfield Elementary um, to have good construction oversight on that. There's a ton of things in the high school that I've found, you know, missing valves, um, issues with some of the masonry outside and so you know there's no real good substitute for really good construction that's outside. why the Massachusetts School Building Authority when they took over the building of the buildings because there were so many new buildings cropping up with these problems that's why they put in the requirement to have the owners project manager because they're the watchdogs <clears throat> for us and often in these projects. well all these projects out of Cork of the works that were the watchdogs and I'm sure they picked up on a lot of things, and I don't think they'll pick up on everything. Mm -hmm. but, Often, uh, local building inspectors don't see a lot of commercial work. Yeah, um, you know, they see primarily residential, and, and a big a, a school job for a small town local inspector is a is a really big project. But I also think, <clears throat> just my two cents, that if folks watching, all of our buildings are getting to be twenty. 25 years old, mm -hmm. and it's just going to be uh, larger maintenance issues as we go forward that we're going to have to start thinking about, you know, including in the budget. Yeah. You don't always know when something's going to go awry, but <clears throat> is there a schedule that <clears throat> shows when the replacement, typical replacement, would be for some of these big items? It might be good to start <laughs> projecting out if these are going to be big costs mm -hmm. coming up in the, the next thing, five I years. Think, I something. think the only thing that you would, that I could think of, would be the air return systems mm -hmm. as something that's on a schedule but you can't put inspections on a pipe <coughs> unless the joint goes because of the quality of the pipe that they used or something right. but our so kitchen it's, equipment it's is very much end of life oh yeah right? absolutely like there's certain things that mm -hmm. i would imagine have a replacement right. cycle right very much the discussion when we had when we were looking at the sprinklers that you know mm -hmm. We had enough sprinkler line, line leaks in the, in the building that um, some people said, well, let's look at replacing all of the sprinkler lines in the building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we laid that project out and we had it bid and the price came in so high that it really didn't make sense. And, you know, we're still having a leak every couple of years and, and such, but we're a long ways from replacing the entire system. and 
you know, the money involved in doing that was, was just huge. Mm -hmm. A little out of time, though, a lot of the pipe has been replaced over time, you know, because we've had leaks here and there. I would suggest, too, that um, thinking about capital improvement potentially, that the kitchen is a place to look at. Mm -hmm. We have a combo oven that, um, that continues to be, you know, temperamental and it's old. And, you know, just buying a gasket for it, hugely expensive because it's you know, well, not, I think not the easily found. There's a kettle in there that needs attention. And all of that equipment is and you know, as old as the school. Exactly the piece of equipment you're talking about has just failed. Yeah, and the kettle has in your field. Yes, it's a $15,000. But that begs the bigger question, uh, which we'll talk about in June. What are we doing with these individual lunch programs that we continually lose money on every year? So that's something we're gonna start talking about in June. Well, I hope you come in with a crystal ball and show us how you can <coughs> improve the lunch program. Oh, we're just gonna do like the old days at your old school. Bring your own sandwich. No, bring the bring the hot meals right to the to the school that doesn't have a kitchen. Have one place cook it, have it delivered <laughs> to all the other schools. That may be uh, that might be a solution. Order your lunch, lunch ahead of time. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, I absolutely know what you're and talking the, about. That is an inherent <coughs> problem for forever. Forever and Covered. every school and yeah. school districts have gone back and forth with taking a loss or going out and getting private firms coming in and then not taking always a taking a loss it and not being too. happy with that. And mm -hmm. there is there's multiple solutions and I think the school committee has to have a bigger discussion about sort of what your philosophy is on it because I've worked in districts where we had a central kitchen at the high school and it was trucked out to all the individual schools. I've worked in systems where you had a private firm come in and do it and there were a lot of cons and I've worked in these where there are individual and local people hands on and participation rates are lower in, in all of the schools and so but I think before we we make a plan and really go any further I I need to hear from from you all who live in the town of what what your feelings are um, and then be able to plan accordingly with the budget what, what are we required to do do we have do we have to provide lunch to we, we have to provide lunch, and then once you've decided you have to provide lunch, there are certain guidelines of what you have to provide mm -hmm. um, and what you can get for commodities. And I mean, none of our lunch programs are supposed to make a profit, but hopefully you break even. Right. And when the law changed a couple of years ago that you can no longer carry over a balance, <coughs> you all have had to absorb, as all the school committees have, mm -hmm. the loss over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So either we accept that, and sort of put a budget contingency or a thought process around it, or we look at doing something differently. So you've got 30 days to think about <laughs> and we'll bring it up again in June. But going back to our capital improvement, we, you know, what we, what other towns have done is every year on the on their town warrants, they've put away 30 to $50,000 a year into a school stabilization fund to start the process of the bigger, of the, of the bigger mm -hmm. job. And that's where it would help to have a plan that really shows right. what numbers are coming up because I think it's going to be hard to do that without any details. Correct. There's a real resistance to stabilization right. funds. And you did that for Conway, Bob. You came up with a yeah, and, couple of years and ago. I've got a list. What, I, what I've done for all of the schools um, as I'm in and out of them and see them and see the different equipment and see the different issues is I have a spreadsheet that I keep that talks about you know things that I see as things that are going to need to be done mm -hmm. and you know it, it it's really difficult to come up with really precise right. estimates to that but it's a good guideline and it, it it'll it'll demonstrate to you that there are good places um, that you can put money and that you can spend money um, from my perspective this school, you know, there's some small problems here, but for its age, it's extraordinarily well well maintained, and it's a nice building. Um, you know, we've had some issues with the roof over the years. Um, there's some issues with the air handling equipment and the temperature controls, but none of them 
are anywhere near, in my mind, approaching the crisis. They're very, very normal kind of maintenance mm -hmm. for a school of the age. Well, oh, the biggest thing, the roof, hopefully we got a grip on the roof now. That was the biggest expense mm -hmm. that we had to endure over the last few years. Well, you have an that, annual review plan, yeah. so I think yeah. that will help. I mean, that, that, I mean that's... <coughs> but I, I guess what I need to hear from the administration is mm -hmm. that as we're getting closer to these capital needs, we need to we hear need to about ready, it, not, right. not mm -hmm. hear about it when it breaks, mm -hmm. you know, so we can start a plan to replace some of these things. And, you know, the town has a, a capital improvement committee and they're willing to take items from the school if we give them, mm -hmm. but if we're not giving them the items, and we're waiting till they break and we say we got a problem help us they're going to look at us you know cross-eyed and say where were you in your plan right the best we could do is preview it well in advance so that we rise to the top of the list so, so we can know. do that for september we can bob and i can work over the summer to do, do well, the I you, do you have something don't you yeah i, I just kind of pulled out i brought the section of the spreadsheet that i keep um for this particular school, um, you know, there's there's some small items, some ceiling repairs here in the building. Uh, there's an issue with toilet partitions. Um, we started on some of that this year. It's came out really well. It, it's an expensive project that should keep going. Um, there probably is going to come a time when when the phones are going to want to be worked on in this building. Uh, there's an issue in most all of the buildings with the central clocks. Um, not working really well anymore. Um, the boilers in this building um, are very typical of, of a lot of cast iron boilers that we have in schools. They're probably going to last a long time, but they're very inefficient. So it's a project that's worth beginning to think about doing is replacing the existing cast iron boilers with some smaller modular boilers that will be more efficient. Um, the controls and the temperature control system in this building um, is, is old. It, it, it's getting to a point where there's problems with it. And again, there's, you know, we've got three other schools that we've put um, computerized ener energy management systems in. They've worked well for the schools and we have shown um, energy savings on them. I've got a note here that we need to look at upgrading, replacing kitchen equipment, which is something Pete mentioned. Um, there's some things we could do with the kitchen hood, the ventilation system, to introduce fresh air to that as opposed to having it pull air from the building that would make it much more efficient. Um, we're going to have to think about doing some paving and, and roadway repairs here, which is going to be very expensive. Um, we've talked on and off about the, the sprinklers. Um, even though we've gotten to a point now where we've decided we're going to deal with that piece by piece and, and replace things as they go. Um, at some point, we probably need to think about replacing all of the sprinkler heads in the building because they're getting to an age where you, usually around um, every 15 to 20 years, um, they want you to replace sprinkler heads. Um, the same things with smoke detectors in, in the uh, fire alarm system. Um, you know, some small electrical guard, uh, upgrades. We've done some small stuff with the roof. The roof on the garage really should be replaced. It wasn't done at the same time as the rest of the building. Um, and, you know, we, we want to look at some of the air handling equipment. Up, you know, the air handling equipment in this building is unusual in that most of the fresh air up in the attic is inducted to the units. The, attic itself is a, is a plenum and it's an it's a inefficient way um, to deliver uh, ventilation air to a building. And there's been a long-term discussion about doing something with the emergency generator in the building. That, I, I can, you know, I've probably got some other stuff that I can pull together. I just kind of thought at the last minute as I was coming here that I would, you know, bring this along. but. You know, if you start adding up the numbers on all of these projects, you're, you're talking a big chunk of money. So doing it by putting some money in a stabilization fund where you know you've got these projects and then if one of these things fails, you've got a chunk of money where you can deal with it pretty quickly. Would, would these be over a three to five year 
Pardon? Would these be over a three to five year plan? Yeah, I, I, I've got, you know, I, I've been, I more look at, I guess if you <coughs> asked me initially, I'd have said five to ten years, but three to Okay, five. but nothing. I'm yeah, even, you know, like right. the, the thing that we discovered with the gas line, if we had had somebody in here, if we had bought a design firm in here to audit this building and look for capital projects, they probably wouldn't have caught that. You know, the, 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 what happened with the gas line is once somebody from the gas company got in here and got looking at the leaks and saying, well, what's going on? Why am I detecting leaks at a couple of these couplings? And then suddenly said, well, gee, that's not the way it should be. It, it's not the kind of thing somebody would quickly pick up. That was just kind of a... Well, the case of the equipment in the kitchen, that's something that should be brought, you know, if there's something that's not working, period, and we're, we're lacking on uh, making meals for the kids, I think it's something that should be brought, you know, to the capital improvement people, and if we need this piece of equipment for next year, can we vote on it next town meeting next year? Right, well, we missed it for this year, so that's yeah. why I'm saying in yeah. September so we year. should come to you with and this we, plan we, and you adopt this plan and then we can submit it to the capital, to the town's yeah. capital, <clears throat> and we'll be in way before the December deadline. No. Did we, didn't we do something for next year already? Phones. The phones. That's, is that all I'll tell you? We submitted it late. Yeah, but yeah, that's for next year. Yeah, yeah. It's already out of it. For so next year. Sure. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not an expert in that uh, field, but I don't know if, uh, you know, we have two systems in the building. It would be good if we could eliminate the in-house intercom system. It's outdated. Uh, the phones are all installed right into the cinder block walls. So one of the issues we've had is that when one of the phones isn't working well, it's because behind the phone, there's dust and you know, cess, you know, dust from the, that's keeping them from working. That's a safety concern because we don't have phones in every classroom. I'd like to see that system, quite frankly, go away and be replaced with uh, some kind of a telephone in each classroom. Well, granted, that's what we, we submit. You know, granted, each a teacher these days that. people have cell phones, but it'd be nice if they could dial nine one one in the classroom. It's the same problem. We're hearing about it after the fact. Oh well, no, I think no, we brought no. we brought it to your attention before. Mm -hmm. yeah. We when, haven't it brought, for it. when it was brought to our attention, I asked that Patty submit a capital request to the Whaley Committee, Capital Improvement Committee, but it was after the deadline, and that was the first time we heard about it, and we reacted, and that's what we did. And it's like these other things, we hear about them, and then we're behind the eight ball because we're not submitting information to this committee that reviews so if Capital we come in September with a five-year plan, then we submit that five-year plan to the town, and they've got our five-year plan. Exactly, but and then we, we have, have nothing to submit, like we've right. been doing, then nothing happens. Right. right. So we can we can do that over the summer, and we'll present it in September, our our capital plan, so that you have you can look at it. Now you know we'll give it in September. You adopt it in October. I'll get it to the town for November, and the deadline is December. And then we could think about maybe setting up some sort of deferred maintenance piece of our budget going right. forward once we see how big the numbers are and what right. we need to build up. And the town would probably appreciate that as well. So I'm making note in my minutes that a capital plan will be submitted in September. You <coughs> won't be here. I know, but my <laughs> minutes will document that. Okay, we'll so yeah, to, to the, the board of minutes. Yes. September. Yes. You can also put in that minutes how many years. I've been fighting for a generator for this school. Well, they, I've been fighting I, for a generator for this I school. I heard there's some money for that. For they, a long, long, they long time. They switched when they got long time. when they got the new building. They <laughs> they were thinking about making that the emergency shelter. So we, we got a grant and everything to get the emergency generator in, and then they put a hold on it because they didn't know what they were doing with the town hall, and it came in much more expensive than we thought. So they put a hold on it. Then they went and bought that the, the new building. And now they're thinking that the new building may be the shelter, which I tried to talk to the town administrator saying, I don't know, you don't have kitchen facilities there. Why would that be your, you know? So I don't know where that is, but Bob and I turned that over to the town because it required more money than we had initially asked for. Do you for. remember how much it 
We asked six, for 11 and it came six. in at 17, didn't it? Yeah, I'm trying, I, I, honestly, off the top of my head, I, I don't want to come out with a number. Well, it's, it, was, it was more expensive than people were asking. I remember the figure 58. But okay, so maybe we put in for 20 and it came in. Well, the Rob 58, 064. No. But you're right. I bet you we put in for 20 and it came in around 60. Yeah. But actually, I just want, I actually just want the, the note I have in my spreadsheet, and please don't hold me to this, was that the emergency generator was could be as much as one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, fifty thousand uh, for electrical, so and, and eighty for the generator. Yeah. I could put the, I could build the building and put the generator. So, but what's the next step on that, Betty, in terms of trying to move that forward? I'd have to talk to uh, the town administrator and see where it is. The, so last I heard the key is we want this designated as the emergency shelter in order to get the generator. We would think the town would Well, we can't yeah. designate it as no, the emergency but, shelter, but, but yeah, once the town us. does, they need to put the emergency generator Here. in. Yes. Is there grant money for something like that? There is, there but is. we went past the line, and I think we had to return. Well, no, we used it to pay the initial work, uh, the mm -hmm. estimate to be done. This kind of planning is very difficult because the you know often what happens is we talk about five or six different projects and when you get down to bringing the numbers to people they're big and they say well it's still working and it's true you know what tends to happen is things fall apart over a period of time they get more and more inefficient and it gets more and more expensive to keep repairing them you know the the kitchen equipment that feeds talking about it's still working but it breaks pretty often and it's expensive to fix it when it does break. Um, you know, new, newer, you, you, approach a, you approach a time where you're spending so much money on repairs, you'd be better off buying something new. So in the, what falls into the range of it's not working, okay, just I want to finish that thought from before, is yes, we have kitchen equipment right now that isn't working the way it ought to work. The combination oven has a problem, doesn't work the way it needs to work, and there's a kettle in there that we can't use at all. And I think that's a, I think that's a seal or a gas leak. Uh, you know, that was tagged by the gas company, <coughs> and it's off right now, but that should be repaired. Just to get back to the phones for a moment, I know that over the years we've brought the phone concerns to this table before hasn't been forwarded into anything, you know, didn't, nothing resulted of, from it. But it's been a number of years that the phones have been a concern. And that's, and again, we can't say, well, they're old phones, but they're working. They don't work. If somebody lets their voicemail, one person lets their voicemail fill up, nobody can leave a message anywhere in the building. Now granted, there's only about half a dozen people who even have a voicemail. That's a problem, quite frankly, in this day and age. All teachers should have a voicemail box. Um, if it's the same people who do that work, uh, who do the central clock system, and I think it might be, then that would be a project that we should combine together, where we can have clocks that custodians don't have to take down and adjust, Not never mind daylight savings time, but when the clocks start to just run behind because they're not, they just don't keep up anymore. Those are, those are things that aren't working, and so I agree that some of the things at the top of that list should be kitchen concerns, our communication system, our phone system. If we could eliminate that yellow phone system entirely, that would be good because it's unreliable. Um, and and I, I also agree, I'm glad you brought up the paving because <coughs> certainly, you know, roads, asphalt wears down at some point, we're gonna need it. Um, and I don't know who takes care of that. Highway departments, I don't know if that's in they the highway. But they were, they were um, talking about the other night, how, they you know, different projects. But the more you it, do, the less it costs. If we do it, I suggest you pour another aprons worth of asphalt out there where people park on the dirt and create some more parking for our building, too. It's busier than mm -hmm. it's ever been. And uh, so where people park across the island now, they're parking on the grass and dirt. Yeah, if we pushed, if we pushed a little more asphalt and created they don't want some to park out there. Park, parking. There are times when the parking out back is full. But most of the time. Yeah, but you're talking about like town meetings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like the other night. I mean, yeah. I, well, there's always but, but, people parking. But the point is, people park there anyway. Yeah. And so you get ruts and you get mud. And uh, and it'd be nice to, to pave the walk coming across the island, too. And that could be done when that project's done. Or it could be done as a separate project. Because right now, we can't shovel it well. We can't uh, use a snowblower on it because it's, you know, stone it's underneath. Yeah. And despite telling people it's dangerous in the winter, just please walk around, they don't walk around. They want to cross through anyway, and I've I, seen I'm one of those down. people who Me takes too. the direct approach, and now with your lovely new light, 
I can see. Yeah, you take the risk too because you might slip and fall out there. One thing to keep in mind as we do this plan also is that the IT needs are going to be going up. So to your point, the phones and the um, mm -hmm. clocks are really more technology. I don't know if Bob is responsible for that. No, that, that would be, be the Scott Paul. So we might want to have two plans. One is the technology because right. I imagine the smart boards will need to be replaced. The computers right. will need well, to be replaced. Well, that we do have a plan for. Yeah, we do, we do yeah, have a plan for that. But the phones, you're right, Katie, in that the phones now may be going the DOI. But we you know we have to have again we have to have a plan. Right. We will have a plan We can't just get it thrown at us here and at go a find meeting money for and it. then we say, Well, okay, where are we gonna get the right. money to do right. this? Now what I I'm glad that Bob did is to reinforce a lot of the future concerns, areas we need to look at. Um, by his own admission, he's looking at, for the most part, except for the two immediate, more immediate ones, five to ten years for some of the other ones. So, okay. thanks, Bob. All right, are you going to hang around for Conway? Pardon me? Are you hanging around for Conway? Because they <laughs> wanted you to. No, I'm going to leave if I can. No, I just wanted a list from him ah, for the main okay. night meeting. Did you leave? Pardon me? Did you leave a list? No, um, she's not coming, and he, he was gonna. She, she, Jan's not coming this evening, and he's gonna get it to me by the end of the week. Gotcha. A list. All right. The Conway list. You remember I sent you the email? Yes. We need a Conway list for next week. Yes. Yep. And I've got a similar thing to this right. for Conway, and you know it's gonna take work to get them. Conway work. <laughs> Do you want your graphs back or? No, those are those are extra copies. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. All right. Okay. We, we're we're trying to keep on schedule here, Mr. I Garrett. am. I'm sorry, but that's where my eye goes to the clock because uh, we have a lot to discussion of vote on policy <clears throat> sections D to J. Now we can did do we, this. Did we vote on those? We didn't yeah. them all. We did A, B, and C. Okay. You can hold on to these, but you have to give them back to me. <coughs> you can hold mine right there. I knew that. I knew you were going to say that. Just, okay, just, fine. just leave it right there. I as as I said in my joint meeting, I trust, meeting, and I I trust the yes, committee thank that you. was formed you guys worked hard on. to review these policies. Thank you. And we have two more sections tomorrow night. Is it tomorrow night? And then we're done. Thank you. So we wow. will have completed the entire. Policy we're book. going to the Waitley Inn for that last meeting to have a celebration <laughs> on, on, on policy. We are? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't organize that, Bob. So what I am asking for is approval on sections D through J tonight. So moved. Seconded. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. That's a lot of paper for a document. <laughs> We'll use, use it for the next committee. <laughs> I, I do. I'm hey. just trucking these around from. Oh, I thought those aren't for the next meeting? No, it was for you if you wanted to no. review them tonight. <laughs> they're going to wait till they get online. And yeah. then I, online. I thought you yeah. said you wanted them back. I do. I'm not making 27 copies. Okay. I'm making. Well, I'm not making any. Could you give Mr. Decker a copy of those prior to the meeting? You know what, Mr. Decker said some very nice things about me, so I. <laughs> <laughs> so all is forgiven. Bob, if you're watching, I, yes. these are no, all available to superintendent. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, discussion of the teacher's agreement. Correct. And Bob also was my buddy on the um, negotiations committee. Uh, yeah. For that, you do have the new contracts in front of you. The one on top is the teacher's contract, and the one uh, behind is the instructional system. Now, I have to say, this is really the first contract negotiation that I've been part of. Um, we had a new attorneys this year, and the only returning member on our committee was Mr. Hoppe. We had a great committee, but it we was. were all newbies to it. Um, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was all men. It was. It was all me, men and except Marty. Marty. me and Ted. Wow, that's unusual. Yeah, usual. yeah so, but I was. <laughs> me and I think on her side, it was all women. It was. It was all women. So we began the teacher negotiations in October. 
it was a very lengthy discussion. And the end result was that they asked for a number of things <coughs> that did not occur. So um, I can talk about what ended up happening. We settled for our contract um, salary increase of 1, 2.5, 2.5. Um, we had originally asked for one, two, and two, and that's what we settled on. Um, we didn't have a lot of things. The, I had one area I wanted to make sure that no time could be taken off before or after a holiday to stretch a vacation. We had a lot of um, legal language to clean up. The other contract, as it was during the time when Regina was leaving and the law firm that we had at that point backed off. So there were a lot of errors loose. and loose ends mm -hmm. that needed to be cleaned up. So we did do that. Um, I don't know, Bob, if you want to add. It's just, you know, it's, it, it's really too bad and it happens because I've been on the last quite a few with the Union 38 teachers, and it's their lawyer that really goes after the. I'm not going to say the juggler, but it's almost the juggler every single time because she has it in her mind that this is the way it should be, and it should be my way, no way, or another way. And it just, you know, but when it went to the assistants, it went very it went smooth. Very well. It went very smooth. I mean, but it just took so long, you know, from October until. Whenever it was, February? March. March. And we were meeting a couple yeah. times a month. So yeah. it wasn't like it was, you know. When, a couple um, of meetings of, we yeah. got cut short. Um, the, our lawyer was had a miserable cold or weather were there, I think, once. I mean, I didn't show up, I think, one night. And I got there, and where is everybody? Well, they get to a point where you can't talk much more about right. any of the subjects. So, okay, you know, we'll go home type of thing. but. But the you know uh, instructional assistance it went very nice. Always they basically wanted equalized pay. Yeah. The instructional assistance that was their their big, um, and we got that cleared with all of the uh, town accountants. Um, and the only other thing instructional assistance asked and received was to be paid if Thanksgiving the day before Thanksgiving was a half day to be paid for that, as everybody else has yeah. always been paid. For so we pay them a full day on the day before um, Thanksgiving. Oh, we give them a bit, half a day. We used to give them a half a day, now we pay them for a full for day. For a full day. Which was, to me, I right. think, was for very, you know, for very fair for what a lot of them have to do. So, so the other thing for instructional assistance, and this actually came from them on early release days, they must stay for the entire day. Um, and they must be part of the child care rotation um, because the instructional assistants didn't think it was fair that there was a small core group that always was leaving. Uh, not they here. weren't getting paid for it. Not here. Not here. Just to be clear. Um, but we're sort of taken out of rotation for the after school care. So in the end, um, much was asked for and little little was given um, and our attorney felt that this was you know he was putting it in perspective because there are attorneys for almost every other district in the county and in Hampshire County as well uh, that it was a good contract and I had to base it, base it on that. It is different working with correct me if I'm two brothers yeah, so we so had two different we had, we had two different lawyers, but they were brothers the same, the same firm. with their father and stuff. So it's family. it was I got them mixed up a couple of times, like okay, but it was very nice versus Dick Hayes that we used to have, totally different young blood, you know, something mm -hmm. something, you know, talking about some of the other groups, you know, Dick Hayes used to talk about it, but I think you know, always seemed like Dick and Fred or Dick and Marianne always had, you know. Well, I'll talk to her on the side type of thing, but it seemed like we, we had a good click between all of us here. Mm -hmm. And we worked well with the people. Because we had a lot of town, we had a lot of town slug men at, 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 at the teachers and the assistant, mm -hmm. uh, instructional assistants. 
selectmen from the other towns that were part of it, instead of just Tom Fight and Kevich with the high school end of things, we had townspeople there except for Waitley. And it was helpful for me to have so many townspeople there because it was during the entire budget discussion so that they could also see, you know, from, from the school's perspective. Um, what people were looking for. Why were the town people there? Can you explain that? Again? They're part of. They're part of the negotiations and stuff like that. They were there. They, well, each town. Ta each town yeah. sent somebody except for Wade. Oh, so so I had select board. You know, from Sunderland and Conway, Conway and then Dude, Bob, and, yeah. and then school committee members, and um, so it was a really good group. Yeah, um, it was. I thought. So were the teachers going to be unhappy that they didn't get some of the things they, I mean, what, how does that um, play out? Well, they agreed to the contract. Right. They, yeah, <laughs> they agreed to it. No, I think they were, they were happy. We were able to give some things that didn't cost any money. For instance, they had asked for um, five prep periods a week. And typically in different schools, some have already have more than that. Right. Um, they get art, music, uh, PE. Um, so they have four guaranteed, but they also have technology and library. So the teachers and the principal will now decide which they'll accompany, uh, the teacher will accompany their class to, mm -hmm. whether library or technology. Mm -hmm. So that's considered another prep, it didn't cost us any money. We had um, the head teacher thing that was a, a discussion <laughs> that went on for longer than I thought, because all it, it entailed was four teachers because there were one from each school and you know the other people on the committee are like saying okay you know this is just about one head teacher from Waitley, Conway, Deerfield and Sunderland that we're talking about but we came to uh, we looked at what other head teachers were right. doing in the area and we came up with a proposal they counteracted and it ended up being I thought fair. And yeah and, and so those were minimal impact things mm -hmm. because they didn't affect a lot of people and honestly, I don't know how much was driven by the teacher and how much was driven by the attorney. Mm -hmm. And my suspicion is that more was driven by the attorney because they agreed pretty yeah. quickly once yeah. we finally came up with a document. Right. Even though Mary Ann didn't want to do it, the teachers, I think, have had it there long right. enough. Right. And, and, and they felt it was a yeah. fair. And I th we so thought it was a fair one. This is the yeah. year. This year, uh, year 2017 is the year that we needed to hold tight a little bit because of the budgets at all four schools and mm -hmm. stuff. So, and I thought that I thought that so worked we out really well. So that's the one with the one percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing, <clears throat> other thing I noticed is that the teachers did get an additional column for their yes, education. Yes, the 45. But again, that's minimal impact because right. you have to have 45 masters plus 45 or CAGs. So we're only talking about a handful of teachers. So again, minimal yeah. impact for the district, but those four or five people who fit into that category mm -hmm. are happy to. And we have that effect here. I just want to go back to your question about mm -hmm. representation from mm -hmm. town. Yeah. Um, the select boards are allowed to have a member sit on negotiations and be okay. part of negotiations. Mm -hmm. So the people out there viewing, this is my point, mm -hmm. that when we hear that they didn't know anything about it, they should know about it because they have representation. I think I think in the case of Waitley, Fred was Fred Orlowski. Yeah, Fred was the yeah. one that was supposed to be part of the negotiations mm -hmm. and I mean that's why I was there also, but I was, you know, part right. of Waitley and stuff. But the but the other like the other towns did have as far as I remember, they had a selectman from each of the other three towns and stuff. They did, like that. and Fred did attend three meetings. Did yeah. Okay. So he uh, I didn't say that to pick no. on Fred. No, but yeah. I, what, I, what I'm really <laughs> saying know is, that. you know, the, uh, the past couple of years there was a discussion about the teachers, or uh, the A's, uh, the issue of, help me out here. Um, okay. release? No. Um, the extra hours? The no, 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 no. God, I. Okay. Free for Yep. Yeah, I would help you, Don. If oh, I knew about it. the incentive pay. Oh, uh, you know, okay. for years yep. served, oh, yep. and, yep. and the town wasn't aware of that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. For the, the past day. number of years now, there's supposed to be representation, so the town okay. should, should be know. aware of that. Okay. Because right. that well, was done probably 20 or more years right. ago, and they, you know they didn't know about it. But right. now, to avoid those kinds of things, if, if 
they have representation, mm -hmm. they should be aware of it. So when they negotiate mm -hmm. with their own town employees, mm -hmm. they can make yeah. things more consistent. Right. And I am sympathetic because the time frame to me <clears throat> was often challenging for people because it was it was said it was always, by the lawyers and, and it was uh, always like four o'clock and there was no yeah. way I could be there until my case after five unless it was a Tuesday. I mean that was right. <laughs> or Marty biggest. brought cookies. Or yeah, that was no that's sort of the policy. No. <laughs> so anyway, I thought all in all, while it was lengthy, I was pleased with the document that we came up with and the process. So I'll make a motion. Is Waitley the first go around on this? You are. Yeah. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept Let's both the teacher contract and instruction aid. Do them one at a time. Like oh, okay. Let's yeah, do I have motion. it down as. Teacher's agreement. I second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to accept the instructional assistance contract. I second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Those you can keep. We can keep <laughs> those. <laughs> yes. Those I do not want back. Okay. Moving along. Uh, I have nothing to report. Discussion on salary recommendations. Oh, yeah, we, I missed that. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I handed you out a colored piece of paper. Looks like this. This is the leading school and attached is the administrators from central office. Um, there, everyone is at 2% with, with a couple of exceptions. Um, Janet uh, Seretico. Um, she went from 55000 to 58000 That was a um, contractual promise we had made her for when she finished her bachelor's degree, which she just did. So she goes up to 58000 And then with the... Who is Janet? Sorry. She's the director of the out-of-school time oh. program. And she, her Where salary is... All funded. Um, is all funded by the tuitions. And it was quite a bit lower than the previous directors, but it was... When I hired her, it was with the understanding that when you complete your bachelor's, I will move it up closer mm -hmm. to um, where it should be. No, and also for the teachers <coughs> and the, and the site, uh, site coordinators, they were raised 2% and a dollar was added because in January, the minimum wage is going up to $11. And some of these people were, are opening, our opening salary is 10 and 1050. So we had to move those up a dollar. So we gave them their 2% plus a dollar. And then down below, Julie Sibley, it should say 1221 because for her, that also has to happen because we had to move up the beginning wages of um, the food service workers as well. So it's the 11? So it should be 1221, not 1121. Did you, have we allocated enough money in our? Budget? 17 budget to cover yes. these increases. Well, these these increases in the, uh, the 43 16 it gets taken care of totally by tuitions. Um, the school lunch, it's there's, there's in, no budget money for that. Um, there's yeah. the budget money that we we need to take but care of is the 4167. Well, it does come back to us, it does, it does, whether it's budgeted or not. And there's is there steps on these two? Uh, no, there's really no steps anymore. Uh, the only ones that really have steps are the um, out of school time people. The ones in the middle. The middle. And then everyone else is at 2%. But we did have to make some, again, changes because the minimum wage is going up to $11. Uh, and then the second page is a 2% raise for all the office personnel with the exception of Scott Paul. Uh, he was given a 5% raise to bring him in line with um, the area. He's he's one of the lowest paid in the area when we look at Pioneer and uh, Gil Montague and Greenfield. Who else did I call? Uh, Orange, East Hampton. East Hampton. Um, so I threw out the high and the low and Marty had also, again, talked to Scott about achievement <coughs> of goals. And now that we're getting more and more technology, <clears throat> Scott's role has been expanding. So we really do now have an IT director who is um, able to do things that the prior person didn't do. And those are new duties added to his, um, 
and I can talk to this. Here's my concern, because I know you guys don't like to increase one particular sound. You're taking the words right out of I know. That's so you're taking the words out of Bill Smith's? No, but let me explain. Um, we finally, after three years, have a stable network. And we were, not to be overly dramatic, but we were on the verge of collapse before. And we now have stable platforms. Um, we're going to be getting a new uh, student information system. He has built a team that is responsive. Um, you don't need to hire, and by no means has he made this statement, but I'm telling you, you don't need to hire a new central office person. Um, his salary, I was concerned that he would start to look elsewhere because he he could easily go elsewhere and make a lot more money. And I, I really want this district to continue in the fashion that they're going with technology. And as more and more comes online, um, I think he's worth his weight in gold. If I could, I'd give him more. But I think it's important that you do that. Yeah. Okay. I, I have to say. I, I know what you're going to say, and I understand. That there are a lot of people <laughs> that work in our schools that are worth a hell of a lot more money. I than agree. I agree. And when you start singling out people, it creates hard feelings, and I'll leave it there. Okay. And, and I totally understand that. I don't know of too many other positions in the district that are as deeply affected by a position as this position. I have to, I have to be honest in that. Too. I know what you're saying, Doc. And I, I hear what you're saying, but I also really agree right. with Marty that these are really critical. Roles. No, I mean I, I'm, I'm really. I, yeah, split I know. Honest, I, so get I gotta it. be honest, but it, when you it's start doing that, it, mm -hmm. it just. Right, and it's too bad we can't have a merit pay practice. for more people. Yeah. But the reality is, but we and you've got to have a top-notch idea. We you do. Prioritize. You do. And, and we and do check. We do check. Do salary checks every time someone's. Um, I, I I don't disagree with that them. at all. But you right. can go through these all. I'm sure a lot of people. I'm sure ninety percent of them you could say. And frankly, you've salary. done that for some of the other people yeah. in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there. I I feel, as my few remaining days as superintendent, um, that. I have to look out for, for these folks because they don't have anyone negotiating for them. Mm -hmm. They don't have steps. And, <coughs> and sometimes, well, I'll just leave it at that. Well, to that point, what is the process for evaluating? These I, I do an annual evaluation on everybody, mm -hmm. on these people. So. And they have goals every year? Mm -hmm. that they're supposed mm -hmm. to meet. They submit goals. They all use the My Learning Plan. Mm -hmm. They submit goals. But even above and beyond that, um, just on where we are as a district now to where we were, which I thought we were going to go back to a three by five card system at, at one point that was that precarious. Um, it, and I have to credit Scott for doing that. I really do. And so yeah, Pete takes next. care of. Pete takes care of everybody on the first page for evaluations and stuff, right, Pete? Well, out of school time, no, not, Janet not does that. Program, I mean, or the lunch personnel. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, going back that. to the lunch, what are we doing with Debbie's and Nowski's position? That is something that we are under discussion with right now. So I'll be prepared more to talk about that in June. Okay, I just okay. wanted yeah. to know what that was yeah. being talked about. Where yeah. is she? Is she at the high school? She's here at the high school and in Sunderland. Sunderland. She sort of had the. She oversees the, the three program. Program. Yeah. yeah. I think she's been, <coughs> three, I think she's been here three years because I remember. Is it three years? And that was going to be a cost saving. Yeah. Effort. Well, she it cost. Right. It, That's what I heard. It, well, it wasn't cost saving. It was to drive sales, and our our participation has gotten higher. But let's say the cafeteria because it really is a bigger discussion in June. In June. And you're not voting on these. Because we don't want to go June. past 7 o'clock, right? Okay. Just Correct. Although there's only two seconds. people here. So <laughs> oh, Bill. for Conway. That's right. I'm here to learn from the master. Oh, hey. Oh. 
<laughs> you got to be here at six o'clock. You gotta <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll look at that in June. I'll make a motion to. No, we're we not going to do anything. No, it's actually not salary. We have to vote on this. No, we were going to have to today for you to vote in June. Just to look at June. We're going to vote on these in June. Yes. Yes. Okay. We used to bring them in June, and then people thought, "Well, you're bringing them to me tonight. We have no time to look at them and your thoughts." So now we bring them to you in May to vote in June. Now, Don, you can say you have no report. Okay, I have no report. Other than that, town meeting approved our. Budget, yeah. with no discussion. In fact, yes, without any discussion on any of the budgets. But. I think I think years ago when they used to talk about every single like line item, the, the highway department and this, and then people would just then we were voting on just one thing at a time. Now it's just one thing. We the love budget. lately. We love lately. Well, normally <laughs> well, what they do is they group them and then they ask, at least ask if you have any questions. But we do that. We just do the whole thing, so right. that's all right with yeah. me. Two right. other towns do that. They go through each line, and if you have an objection, you yell hold, and then we go back. It, it was it was really nice when Paul and Ted did get up uh, and, did and talked about you. things, and he says, yeah. you know, we have some problems with these charter things going on in our, in our state. And, Hopefully he got the word out a little bit more yeah. so people could start asking more questions right. about right. the charter schools and stuff which are are really hurting us deeply. Maybe I can do the collaborative update. There was a lot of talk about the charter um, issue at those and they mentioned one project that I thought might be of interest to people is that they're looking to do a marketing project about the value of public schools mm -hmm. in the area yeah. and they're looking to do maybe a survey of parents and families about the public schools and try and sort of counter what the charter schools are doing. Um, so I thought that might be of interest to people here yeah. you know, in terms of a way to help educate people more. Too. Um, that was really the only thing that came up. Okay, good. Thank you. Pete? So um, you have a principal's report in front of you. I'll try to be very brief with it. What's not on your principal's report is uh, just want to point out to you that on your Lately at Waitley newsletter, there is a calendar of events for the rest of this year. A lot. And, yeah, and I just want to point out the ones that, you know, you, a lot of you folks are busy during the day. You can look at this yourself. But there is a string and band concert on May 5th, coming right up uh, at Frontier. Uh, MCAS testing is from the 17th to the 23rd here at Waitley. There's a chorus concert and art show on the evening of the 25th. These are all things that we'd love to see you come to. Graduation, of course, on June 13th. And just so you know, last day of school is on the 14th. It's a half day. Woohoo! 14th. Um, no snow days. Two. Two. summer two. ever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> are are sorry. Really I know. I know. <laughs> so now if you look at my principal's report, I, once again, I've annotated for you, but I will try to briefly go through it. Um, time flies. We are already have, we're reaching the point where two of our three parent seats are in uh, are nearing the end. This is the end of their two year term. Either of those folks is welcome to nominate themselves, but keeping true to the system, we're also asking for nominations outside of school uh, council. We haven't gotten any yet. I will keep you updated. If other folks nominate themselves, there could be a vote. A couple of the folks on the committee currently have said, hey, if somebody else nominates and wants to be on, then maybe I won't run and we'll give somebody else a chance. But anyway, I'll keep you updated on that. I just wanted you to know that. And we also have two staff seats, uh, faculty seats, that are in their second of a two-year term. So we'll have an election in-house. Uh, faculty elects other faculty. PTO runs a parent election to elect uh, seats on, this, on the school council. So who are the current members? Can you tell us who those are, the ones that are staying on it? Sarah. Um, Sarah, help me with the line, I'm blanking. Sarah, good, uh, gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm totally blanking because her kids have a different name than her, so I can't remember her last name. Sorry, good. Overstreet. Sarah Overstreet. I wanted Sarah to say Overstreet. good street. Sarah Overstreet. Um, and um, um, Nicole? Sarah Overstreet and Nicole are the two that are in the seats. Nicole Clayton are in the seats that are up for their two-year term. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Maureen Nichols just... Uh, is in her first year. She's the one who took over for you, Katie. Okay. Yeah. And then the faculty are because isn't Stephania was on it? Stephania she... is at is uh, at the end of her two year term, and um, Chris Huntley also. <coughs> 
So anyway, just wanted you to know that we've promoted that. Uh, we put it in the newsletter, and we also sent out an email just today. And we'll, we'll repeat that several times so that folks know that we're interested in them nominating themselves. Um, I wanted to just give you a quick school choice update, uh, but I'll get back to that. There's also a Tanzania article that you should read if nice. you haven't already. Yeah, mm -hmm. really nice. We gave you a clean yeah. copy because it has some really nice pictures too. Great article that the recorder did for us, just you know, one of the best pieces of publicity I think we've had in a long time. And then Mr. G's performance is here tomorrow also. Um, uh, that's our daytime thing, but Mr. G is a Grammy winning Latin children's artist. If anybody can make it, please and come see it. And wait for us. Please come see his show. School choice update. Um, so these numbers are always fluid, as you know, because uh, uh, school choice requests can come at any point in time. But I wanted to point out to you two things here. If you look at the kindergarten numbers, uh, that is the only class at the moment where we will need a lottery, and I'd like to take care of that um, as soon as possible. But I'll see you right after the meeting to talk about when maybe you can draw uh, lottery numbers for us. Uh, but the way it's looking right now, and I just want to explain it, because there's an asterisk, is, if you see, next to that eight. So we had eight school choice applications. Of those eight, um, three are uh, applications that have preference, because they have either older siblings in the building, or uh, according to the personnel policies, staff have some preference, too. So that, uh, that number is represented in the 15. So three of those eight are already in. Okay, so that brings us to 15. If we stick to our target size of 18, I've got five more applicants, and we'll pick um, three. Three, three of those. Three out of the five. Yep. So that's where we need to draw. Okay? okay. And if you look at the overall numbers down below, if we uh, if we get you know, if we take all, if all of those eight agree to come and then you do the numbers and you count up to the 14 at the bottom, if everybody who we accept comes to us, then our school choice numbers will increase by three on paper, you know, for next year. Which uh, equals? Uh, 47. 44 this year, we're losing nine, and we hope to get, uh, tw that's actually 12 back. Got it, okay. okay. Good. And uh, that'll be 47. But the only other thing I wanted to t point out to you is that in first, second, and third grade, we still have room for one or two more school choice students. And if this committee wishes, um, I can do another ad and see if we can't get a few more applicants before the year is over. I, I do want to remind you that once the school year begins, I mean, we can take we can take school choice people right through the summer. But I do not like to take that take them during the school year. Um, you know, we, we take residents obviously to bring them into town. So so if 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 this committee wishes, uh, I'm happy to, and I would recommend that we do advertise one more time. I, I would suggest we do. Because the total number is going to be down, even with the school choice numbers, right? Uh, not if, no, it could well, potentially if, go up. If you fill up more spots, it will, but as it no, is right now? If everybody who's on the list now accepts, the numbers will go up by three. That's what I said a moment For ago. For school choice, but the total yeah. numbers, because aren't the residents... Are there same number of residents? Yeah. Total numbers may go down, but... Right, but, but yeah. The total number yeah. of children in the school will be smaller? But, well, it depends. I mean, right now, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't really <laughs> think about that part of it, but it looks like, you know, anticipated numbers would be 124 for next year. We're, I think we're right around... 30-something. Right this, doesn't, this doesn't include pre-K. The 130 number includes pre-K. In any case, this is really about the school choice and the, and right. the money that okay. goes with yeah, it. So, it makes sense. Okay, so I will do that. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Fair. Well, given the late hour and that Conway has now arrived, I will just boom boom <laughs> this really quick. Uh, the rural consortium of superintendents continues to meet. I included the um, bullets that I included in your letter to the legislators, um, some suggestions on how to look at funding. Um, one thing I wanted to add that I just received word that Representative Alex um, Peich and Senator Sun Chang Diaz, who are on the Education um, Committee, um, don't feel that there's going to be any legislation that's going to come forward, that the Senate and the representatives are not going to be able to agree on anything. So I don't know what that means. I'm starting to see more and more of meetings for urban charter schools so I don't know if they're trying to 
people away from the moral rule, but I wanted to, you to be aware of that. Is that a good sign, then? Or um, what would you say? It, it could be. Mm -hmm. It could be a good sign. Mm -hmm. But there might be a little bit of political pressure coming to not want to address and lift we'll the cap and, yeah, uh, out here. So it could be. So stay tuned. Um, budgets, we have three of the four, so we have the Frontier budget, and we have Conway next Monday. And just pleased that our, our principals have been um, really out there trying to um, hire for all of the retirements and some of the resignations that we've had. Really pleased with the caliber of the candidates that we're getting. We're a very desirable district, and so we're getting large large pools of candidates. Who Who's retiring here this year, Pete? Our school nurse, Devorah. Uh, we had a retirement earlier in the year yep. and Glenn. My note there. Um, Stephanie Schaffer, our counselor, oh, and yeah. Claudia Belden Green, our school psychologist. Oh, you know. Yeah. So four yeah. retirements. Wow. I think it'd be good for him to, you to sign each yeah. Mr. Lesko, I think, and Mr. Lesko. <laughs> I'm looking at him, Mr. Halla, I would ask that you sign these um, so, that, so that there's no perception of any gotcha. conflict. Are the warrants signed? Yeah. Are the warrants all signed? Yeah. You signed all the warrants, right? Yeah. You want to see these? Okay. So you, you're going to leave me with these? <laughs> I trust them. You want me to help you carry them up? Yeah. Oh, you're stay for another year. I have another meeting, and Andy, bless his heart, just a plug for Andy, came over to my office to pick up this thousand pound box today in the <laughs> rain, and he's bringing it back to my office tomorrow oh, morning. Right. So he's a very good man. Alrighty, I think we are set. We have a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. A second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll turn it over.